Well, cow signals and today feeding signals. First question, how big is a rumen? What do you think how big it is? The rumen is this big round thing here. Filling almost one third of the cow. It's a huge machine in a machine. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. I want to explain you how the cow works. And this is one of the things. So if you calculate right, then it's easy. You have a feed advisor and you calculate and you think, okay, well, we end up with, um, with um, calculation, the ration and goes into cow and that'll be fine. But there's a huge variation in what your cows eat. So what we like is that feeding signals that every cow can eat 12 times a day, 12 identical meals at the feed fans, evenly spread over the day or in the field, but not many cows are seeing grass. In Holland, 10, 30%, 70% of the cows are still grazing in Holland, but they only eat, um, they're only out for 10% of their time because they, have, they eat most of it inside. They're just out for exercise mainly and a few for grazing, uh, which is probably the ideal. But here you see that we like to have 12 identical meals per cow per day. And if you start measuring, a lot of cows don't reach that. The weak cows only go six times a day. And how can we make more cows going 12 times a day? What do we have to do for that? Well, let's have a look. Uh, we want the cows to eat, drink, have enough light, air, rest, and space. If you have all these six things organized, this is the cow signals concept, then you will end up with a very healthy herd. And you can fine tune on all these six points. Small things you can do tomorrow, and you get more milk the day after. So if you calculate it right, you have the right materials and the right procedures, you know you're going to be successful, right? You get the planned result. So he has a planned result too. Look at this. So, and then, there you go. <laughs> so plan it and you get it. Well done. Interesting research from uh, Spain, uh, Mr. Bach from Spain. He came up with a very interesting uh, um, uh, figures that more than half of the success is not what's in the feed, it's actually what you do around it. They had 47 farms and they fed exactly the same mixed ration. And what do you think how many liters difference there were between the best farm and the worst farm out of 47 farms feeding exactly the same TMR? How many liters difference? Give me your best guess. You say seven. Anybody more than seven? Twelve. I hear twelve. And they are here fifteen. It was actually 13,7 liters. So let's say 14 liters. 20 and 34 liters from exactly the same ration. Amazing, eh? And that is, if you realize that, that you, you see that, hey, we are focusing so much on feed advice and the right quality. Well, that's not the whole story. The whole story, 55% is actually what happens behind and in the feed fence. What happens there? What happens in the barn? Are the cows resting, eating? Can they easily reach the feed? What about the water supply, air, light? All these things have a lot bigger impact than we ever thought. And this, was, this research was proving it and it makes people more aware. So that's why Purina decided to yeah, get me out here and do this type of trainings because they like to give the good food feed, but we also need to have the right advice. And that's why uh, we are here doing this stuff. So if you want to have more questions, uh, the, the, the gray shirts are all Purinas and the, the, the certified trainers and the blue shirts from Purina are uh, advisors. They're all trained on, on, uh, on cow signal skills. So you can talk with them and invite them. We also like you to sign in. Um, are, are the cards somewhere, uh, Barry? Are the cards around here already? I think it would be good if the Purina guys uh, send out a few of the cards because we offer them, yeah, the cards on the table here and there to sign in for a, a cow brush. But that's not the most important thing. You can win a cow brush, but what you can, where you sign in for is actually a free workshop cow sales on the farm. So I'd like you to do that. They will hand them out to you. And please fill them in because you get a very nice workshop with these guys. They're all very well trained and you're going to see more than you ever saw if you do a workshop cow sales. Today we're going to focus on the rumen and the eating. So we have rumen signals, eating signals, and barn signals. And the rumen signals, well, the rumen is a very interesting machine. If you look very carefully here, you see the, the hairy inside of the rumen. They call it the villi. 
That's how the, the rumen looks from the inside. And the longer the villi are, the better they absorb the, 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 um, the nutrients. And the better um, they absorb, the better it is. If they get acidosis, the rumi, the villi, go down. And you have less absorption and less feed efficiency. So how do you keep that rumen, that machine, healthy? Does this look healthy? She didn't eat enough. She's not very shiny. So first of all, the thing is one-third of the cow. So it's 200 kilos of a rumen there. That's a huge thing. The, the, oh, the, 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 um, the heart is here and the lungs are here. And the lungs are pretty small compared to the rumen. It's a machine made for transforming grass into milk. And that's quite amazing. It's all the way till the back here and on the left side of the cow. And we can score it in this little triangle here, right? Behind the, the pin bones. That's where you score the rumen. Behind this pin bone. So what do you think about these two cows? What about the rumen? Is it okay? I need five signals on this picture. Have a look. Five signals on these two cows. What are they trying to tell you? We can't continue if I don't get five signals. What did you see? You was not looking. You were right. You're filling in your, 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 your car. That's good. What do you see in this, on this uh, cow? What is he trying to tell you? And that's what cow signals and feeding signals is about. Looking at cows and trying to understand what these cows are trying to tell you. Anybody? Come on, don't be shy. What's that? What did you say? <laughs> she's hungry. You see, she didn't eat. You see that she has a hollow rumen and she didn't eat. What else? What else are they telling you? She's standing half in, half out the, the, the bed. It's a waiting cow. She's not resting. She's waiting. She's standing there. It's not good for her hoofs. And she's probably not very happy. Either she's lame or not very healthy or happy. Otherwise, she would be laying down. Or the bed is not good enough or the air is not good enough. What else do you see? Three more signals. Otherwise, we sit here all day looking at this picture. I've got another hundred pictures for you. The tail is very dirty. Good observation. The tail is very, very shitty. So you can see weeks after this uh, occurrence of diarrhea, you can see, still see it on the cows, either on the tail or on the, on the two pin bones because they spread it out. One farmer once told me cows actually uh, don't know they have diarrhea, so normally they lift up the tail before they start shitting. But then they are too late, so they splash it out it's like, a, like a window wiper. And that's why they spread it out on the two pin bones, and you can see it weeks after, if you don't have a decent brush. So that's why Perina and De Laval want to offer you a, a cow brush if you sign in. Um, so dirty on the tail, dirty on the floor if you look carefully, and it's hard to see there's a very wet, splashy diarrhea part on the floor. And you can also hear cow signals. You can see them, you can hear them, you can feel them. But the one that you can hear is actually this one. It's a <laughs> that's one. Or you hear this. <laughs> or that's, a, that's still a, quite a bad diarrhea. Or the other one is like this. <laughs> that's pretty good. And if it goes really slow, <laughs> and then you can see the tears in the eyes of the, of the cows. That is a number five very heavy. Uh, a uh, dry cow maybe, or even an elephant, or a camel, or a horse. So look and listen in the, your shed and find out what's going wrong. Here you see thin manure, and you see dull cows, not very shiny. And this screen is even better. So how many of these animals are in this room? And well, if you look at, if you start counting them, it's quite a job. Counting how many animals in one teaspoon. I mean the bacteria, the protozoa, the, um, the what else, microbes. These animals are making the milk. These are the right, the right animals. That, that's actually the, the smart animals. The cow is nice, it's a nice animal, but these animals do the work. You know how many we got in a rumen? In one teaspoon in a rumen fluid? We got seven billion, as much as people on the earth, in one teaspoon. So it's amazing what happens in this rumen. If you look at them, they're very small. The big ones are the protozoa here that you see in these uh, red spots. And there's many, many small ones you don't even see, there's bacteria. They make the milk. Food comes in and uh, manure comes out. How long does it take? What do you think? How long does it take for a cow to process food? An hour? A week? Or something in between? Well, 12 hours, that's very fast, but normally it's 24 to 36 hours, the, the passage rate. In a dry cow, it can be three days. So it depends on the speed in the rumen, and that depends on the fiber in the rumen. So it goes through the system, 
And then you see that they eat a lot, they drink a lot, and they actually have a lot of saliva produced. What do you think, how much saliva is a cow producing per day? What do you think? Like the wet stuff, okay? To buffer the acid feed, that's what they do. They, get, they buffer the acidity of the feed. The feed is acid, and they eat it, and they get a pH drop in the rumen. So they better make saliva to balance that, because a healthy rumen is, is uh, 7, and not, uh, is, is more than 5.8, 6 pH, not lower than that. And the most feed is more acid, so they have to produce saliva. How much saliva? What do you guess? Give me some liters. How many liters? Give me your best guess. One? One liter? Anybody more? Per day. How much liters? 250 liters. That's, and they drink 140 liters per day, so there, there's 400 liters flushing through that system, like a, it's a constantly wetted machine to have the best effect. And then we're going to look a bit better, bigger into the rumen. Um, in the rumen, two-thirds of the daily energy and two-thirds of the, of the daily protein is produced in the rumen and absorbed by the villi. And for that, for that action, you have to really want to have a good machine uh, mixing it. So in the last part is the, is the thick intestines, that's where the absorption goes, the water goes out, and um, then you get a bit more decent manure. So let's look in the, in the rumen. Don't ruin the rumen. The rumen is an amazing machine, and this is the inside look. And here you see in the front, you see the net structure. The, um, it goes, it's called a net, uh, um, 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 net maag in Dutch. And here is the, is the, the this chamber. And it's like a big mixer. In the low part, you find a lot of fluids. In the top part, you find a bit of pea soup. Pea soup, a bit thicker. In a dry cow, you find a big layer of roughage. And in the beef cow, but in a, in a, in a dairy cow, it's more like a pea soup. It's not really a, it's a thicker layer on a thinner layer of fluid. And on the top layer, you find some, um, some um, gas. So the ideal cow is eating 12 times per day, 2 kilos dry matter, more or less. And that's what the ideal cow does every day. So how does it work? She's eating it, she's swallowing it, and then here the feed is, is sort of stored for a moment, and then it goes back for, for, uh, uh, for chewing. And then if it's fine enough, it goes in the whole system, and it's floating, and the, the big particles come up again. So you see all these things floating here and going up and down, and then the gas is produced, and then the mixing is going. And the mixing is like a washing machine. It goes like... One times left and one times right. So it's a big washing machine that's shaking all the stuff. The fluids go along the villi, and that's how the rumen absorbs all the stuff. It's an amazing machine. And then she wants to bring up the cut ball. And what she does when she brings up the cut ball, she's pulling up this part, zzz, squeezing it up. And then it's like a mesh. That's why it's a net. It's like a mesh to keep all the rough parts. And the loose parts go through. So the loose, thin particles, go. they come in here eating, and they go out here. This is the exit. So this whole system here, the entrance is here where, where, the, where the mesh is. And this is also for, for, for chewing. It goes back to the mouth. And this is where the fluids go through and out to the next stomach. So this is only the first stomach of the cow. Well, actually, the first two. This is what we call uh, one, two. Then they have the, the big bookmark on the, on, the, on the side. And then we have the, the, ab the abomasal that is often being displaced. But that's underneath here. You don't see it. So um, when she's doing the, the, the cut ball, she's pushing up all this long fiber. And, and then she's... So she's um, uh, slicken, swallowing uh, to get under pressure, and then whoop, the ball comes forward, she starts chewing, and then it goes back again. So how many chews does she make? How many chews on one cut ball, you know? 40? Who is counting them on a regular basis? Who's counting cut balls? Hands up, who's doing that? Counting, cut, counting not cut balls, counting cuts on a cut ball. Yeah, you do that? What's the average on your farm? I hear 200, that can't be true, no. 450 minutes chewing per day. I can't hear it. How many chews do you have? You say 40. We see on an average farm, we see that the cows actually chew always, well, more than 55 chews per cut ball. But you have to calculate from bringing it up, start chewing and swallowing it. So you, you said how much? Yeah, 450 times, but you mean 450 minutes uh, per day. You have, you have the measures? Yeah. Okay, so if you have the, 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 the red machines, robots, they measure it, and we measure 400 and 420 minutes per day up till 600 minutes per day. That's like 10 hours chewing. A cow is busy with 10 hours with chewing. 
So again, look at this machine. Here's how it's filtering the fluids out and, the, and the, uh, the big stuff goes back to the mouth. And then we have the gas production, right? The gas. So the gas is a lot of gas coming out um, and twice every um, um, five minutes, twice, they do like burp, getting gas out. And you know how often the machine is actually moving? How many moves does the machine make? You can feel it when you're hanging the side of the cow. You can feel the room and, room, the room and working. And if you hang in there, you can, every 30 seconds, it's pushing you out. So start, try this at home. It's interesting. You go in this triangle, hang in there, and just wait and look at your watch. Hey, I feel a movement. Okay. And then go down again. And then that's what we do with the workshops, trying to touch the cows, understand the cows, trying to find the empty rumens. So that's why I like you to sign in for this workshop. Gas going up, and then twice every five minutes, there's a burp. So two times per minute, it's moving. And then twice every five minutes, there's a burp. Well, that's not very important information, but it's nice to know, okay? Now let's go to the practical part. We want to have more dry matter intake. And how do we get that? Because dry matter intake is milk yield. But we also want to have an excellent feed efficiency. It's even far more important. So what are the most feed efficient farms? Oh, this one, by the way, is a UNO here. Do you see the UNO? The UNO is an unnotable, uh, an, 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 an unexplained notable observation. You see it, but you don't know what it is. You see that the heads of the cows here? They are very hungry because they were eat, waiting for the feed machine to come and they were uh, actually having feet on the heads. The feeding table shouldn't be empty, the cows shouldn't be that hungry. If you feed them regularly and push regularly, you probably don't have them so eager for the food. So it tells me a little bit that this was probably a bit empty too long. So look at this uh, sheet here. What are the best farms? These are 50 farms from one feed advisor in Minnesota, I think he is. And, um, and he is showing the differences between his farms. Amazing. Same feed advisor, 40 farms. And what is the difference? Well, the farmer. And which are the best ones? Over here, and even this one, producing, producing 36, 34 liters of milk, 35 liters of milk, with 22 kilos of dry matter. And this one is almost the same 23 kilos of dry matter, only she's producing 28 liters. So here you see the six liters difference between, between two farms with the same feed intake, the same dry matter intake. Only the output is plus six liters, pure profit. So how can you bring this farm the here up in the ladder to the six liters more? And that's what I'm really interested in. We always have been watching the best farms in the world, trying to understand what they do, how they do it, and how can we copy it? Because it's just copying good behavior. That's what I do, copying good behavior. So trying to find out. This is one and a half liter of milk per cow per liter dry matter, per kilo dry matter. And the low end is 1.2. And if you look at the, the, the bookkeeping in, uh, in um, Keenan, the Keenan um, company did a, a good research in, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. They measure 0.9 kilos dry matter, in, uh, sorry, 0.9 feed efficiency. So that's less than a liter of milk per kilo dry matter intake, up to 1.7 on the extreme well-organized farms. So just imagine, you can double the output by just getting a better feed efficiency on a bad farm. <laughs> You see also the average is 1.35. So where are you? Are you average? Are you below? Are you up? We can all find it out for you. Dry matter intake is milk yield. So get the right machines and you get more in. You look at this pig and chicken here. Big eyes. They can't believe it. He's eating everything and they get nothing. You see, they only eat mud. So you need a good machine and you have more dry matter intake. Well, it's not that easy. We all want to have more milk, right? So look at how we can reach that. What are the best farmers doing? This guy has 10 to 12 meals per day, like 12 meals is ideal, but the best cows in the world have actually 14 meals per day. And uh, they just go 14 times a day to the feed fence. And what's the benefit of that? If you eat a little bit every time, you don't have a big pH drop in your rumen. And you stay above this red line, the acidotic line of 5.8. So every time a little meal, I can still make enough saliva. Also, when there's a bit more fiber in the feed, you see the cows not only like, like in America, you see the cows eating like this. <laughs> They're like vacuum cleaners, okay? They're fast food in America. 
And that's how they ruined the cows within two years. Well, I congratulated them last week in Memphis. I said, well, congratulations, you ruined all your cows in two years' time. So you must be very proud of that. We like to keep our cows four till six years in production. And you do that with a little bit more fiber. If you give them more fiber, they have something to chew on. So you see our Dutch cows eating. They take a bite, and then they lift up the head and they chew. The more they chew during eating, the more saliva they make, and the less deep they go in acidosis. So it's just a, a lot smarter system with more fiber. But you don't squeeze the last two liters out. But in the end, you squeeze two more lactations out. So what do you want? You want to have two liters per day more? You want to have two lactations more in the long term? And then you do the maths. And nobody can calculate in America. I've been calculating with them. And even if the price of a, of a heifer is exactly the same as the curl cow, still I want to keep my old cows. I've been calculating this more labor efficiency, less sick cows, less trouble, more fun, but also more money. And you only need half of your young stock. So your young stock shed is less work and, and, and a lot more space. And they don't get sick because of overpopulation. So there's only, there's almost only profit in there, but people don't understand it. And I'm trying to tell you how the best 1% farmers in Holland make 60,000 liters by doing the things right. And you can all copy this because there's no rocket science. It's just common sense. And if you want to learn more, come to the workshop or do the video learning or even, even go to a live training is the best. We also have a, a tremendous series of books now available, very good stuff. But it starts with small changes, and that's what I want to do here. I want to kick your asses a little bit to do better tomorrow. So I'm very glad you came, and I hope you're going to take something really useful home today. Look at the other cow, six meals a day. And every time he bangs into the, six times he bangs into a little acidosis. So he's a little bit sick, and that's the cow that's laying down there. She's not really powerfully chewing, a bit like, mm, a bit weak. Maybe the ears are hanging a bit. And she's not so happy because she's a bit sick. I don't feel well. So the best medicine, the best medicine is water. So I feel a bit sick, so well, let's have a good drink. Okay, I feel a little bit better. And she get away with it, and she will eat again in four hours. But smart cows, they eat every two hours. And they never get sick. And now we get bad selection. So if you have a lot of selection on your cows, uh, eight meals a day, but not very well mixed. The cows can select. And then the first half of the herd, because we normally have only far too little feed space, the first half of the herd will eat very rapidly and get very, very sick twice a day. And the second part of the herd only eats fiber, and they get ketotic. And they have ketosis and they have lack of uh, energy because they only eat fiber. So that's what happens if you don't have one feeding place per cow. And everybody telling you, no, you don't need one feeding place per cow, that's somebody who wants to sell you something. And something that you don't need normally. So you need one feeding place per cow. So you have to design your barn for one feeding place per cow. If you want to remember one thing, well, you want to have no acidosis, you want to have 12 meals per cow per day, you only reach this with one feeding place per cow. Going from 30 centimeters to 100 centimeters, that's it's going up like this. So every centimeter more feed space is more feed intake. But then at 70 centimeters, it tops a bit. So it, it, it gets a bit more flat, that curve. So that means that what is the ideal feed space, economy-wise, because eh, my dad is an agricultural economist from Wageningen University, so I was brought up with, with money things, but also brought up with care. My mom is a nurse, so I'm the mix of these two. So we're trying to find out. So okay, let's say 70 centimeters. It's all proven in very good research that 70 centimeters is probably the optimum to having the maximum feed intake per cow and still having the reasonable cost for building a bigger barn. But for dry cows, we built 85 centimeters because we see that they need more feed space. Although they probably won't eat all at the same time, we still see that more feed space is more feed intake. More cows will go 12 times a day. It's just logic if you think about it, you know? But you, you need some space to move around, you need some space to eat. So I'll show you a movie in a, in, in a minute. So this is two times a day, very sick, and that is really very bad. So these are little monsters inside, beautiful animals. They make the milk. And here you see a piece of straw on the right side where they're actually eating on the straw. The better they, 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 um, they ferment all the fiber, the more money you get, the more feed efficiency you get. So that's why you want to have the pH above 5.8. Then you have the maximum feed efficiency. Um, this is an interesting one, beef cows eating only elephant grass, I think, because they were 12 hours chewing, and we, we measure in, in, in Holland, we measure 600 minutes chewing on the best cows, so that's 10 hours chewing. 
the most healthy cows with the highest liters, the highest production, they are in the highest normally in the, in the, in the 10 hours chewing. But we measure in, the, in these robot farms also 420 minutes. I think that's far too little. That's interesting you said 450. That's okay. But we see in Denmark and Holland, the best farms are on 550. So that's 100 more minutes. You only know it when you measure it, so very few people can measure it. But there's new tools coming now where you can measure rumination time. I think it's extremely interesting because you can see the cow getting sick, but you can also look at the herd average. One farm in Japan I was, they were making food for 15, uh, 15 farms, and he was measuring constantly the rumination time. If it went below 500, he said, I put more fiber in because I know I'm on the risk zone already. So interesting, but you can calculate one cow, and if she's chewing more than 55 cuts, uh, bites per cut, that is normal. But if you see a cow a little bit sick, you start calculating her chews, and you find very often they are below 55. And if they are below 50, they really are at high risk. They are, they are acidotic already. They're getting a little bit sick. They're not, they're not well. So here you see if you, if you have only, um, if you have six, hour, uh, six kilos dry matter intake, beef cow, she has 120 minutes time to chew on that. But if you double the feed intake to 12 kilos dry matter intake, she only has 60 minutes to chew on it. So, and now you think about our cows, they are 24 <laughs> kilos of dry matter intake, so they only have uh, less than a half an hour to chew on it per kilo. So they have a lot less time to chew on that food. So that's when a, a beef cow or a nature cow can still be very successful. They just chew all day on this elephant grass and they still make money out of that grass, but they don't produce 20, uh, 30 liters of milk. So, interesting to understand what is happening in a cow. So, six hours eating, 10 hours rumination, that's the aim. And then the cow is very busy, right? So, they are 14 hours resting, and of that 14 hours, they are 10 hours chewing. So, 14 hours resting, six hours eating is 20 hours. You only have two hours left for milking and two hours for some socializing and drinking and, and being in heat and showing who's the boss. So that's the time agenda of a cow. And a cow is actually more than a marathon runner. We looked at the energy equivalence of a cow uh, producing 30 liters of milk. It's exactly the same as a man running 42 kilometers. So just think about yourself as a coach of, 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 uh, of, of 50 or 100 marathon runners that you have in your barn. And you know what? What's the difference between a cow and a marathon runner? The cow is running the marathon every day. So we can't have one day when the vet comes, oh, we locked them in for three hours. You can't do that. You have to organize it. Let the vet come every week or every two weeks, whatever, because you don't want to lock in your cows longer than a half an hour because that's what they do. They eat a half an hour. So every minute longer than a half an hour is a waste of your cow's assets. So never lock them in more than a half an hour. And organize your work around it. Think like a cow and you will be a winner. You will double your output. I was saying this yesterday, the best farms in Holland already make 60,000 liters milk. And we've been showing that the barns that we design are my barn design team. We had with Jack Rodenberg together, we, designed, we had a, a lot of barn design training and we made a new concept for robot barns. And we see them going, coming from an average barn, 30,000 liters lifetime production. They just go up in a few years to, 30, to 40, slowly 50,000 liters, and some of them even go to 60,000 liters lifetime production. My top barn with sand bats is Harry Nijmeyer, brilliant farmer. He is on 67,000 liters last year. Amazing, 67,000 liters. He only killed 17 cows, voluntary culling, out of 140 cows. So very low culling rate, 67. It's, it's true, I'm not telling a lie. It's, it's a real story. And we make it happen because just by looking at the cows and asking the cows what they want, you can do that. But it starts with understanding, and that's why we made our, our programs, video learning, live trainings, because you have to understand what's happening. So how can we make them eat 12 times a day? That's what people ask me, okay? Well, it's actually eating easy. You make sure there's always food there. That's the first thing, 22 hours. So when you clean the feeding table, you can clean it, but make sure you first have the mix ready, then you clean it, and then you feed it. So that's one extra jump off your tractor maybe, but, um, or, or, or using another machine, but I don't want you to be this table to be empty for hours. You can't do that. Cows don't have time for that. Eating signals. Look how they eat and what they eat and how they do it. That's very interesting. And, and did they eat? You want to you check the cows. So you check for belly fill. Sorry, today is rumen fill, the triangle here. Last week is the belly fill. And last month is the condition score. So your, your every cow is a scoreboard. You can just score her, and she will tell you uh, what happened with her. 
So here you see a dry cow with an empty rumen, not a very good signal. Dry cows should be five because they eat so much fiber. This dry cow is two. Wow, that's not good. And she's also a bit dull. And uh, this is actually a New Zealand Australian dry cow, by the way. And here you see a happy, a happy very shiny cow in Holland um, with tail paint, uh, and, uh, but she's very full and shiny. So that's the, bell, that's the rumen score that you do. Next one you look at, uh, this is the danger triangle. Uh, this cow is in danger and the score is one to five. Very easy, you learn this on the workshops, how to score your own cows. And you, you can see every cow that's a two is in high danger. So what about this cow? She's in danger. And she is sick already or she will get sick tomorrow because she's not eating enough. She's not filling herself up. So what can we do? This should be like this, three and a half, four. The best cows in the world never go below three and a half. They produce a tremendous amount of milk, but they always fill the machine up to the max, or to the optimum. So they're always three and a half, four. You have very shiny cows, but you see the belly difference, a big hanging belly, big belly here, and a very tucked up belly. If you look from the back side, it's even more clear. You're standing two meters behind a cow, and then you see, hey, I'm gonna stand here, two meters behind her, and then you see, okay, is the belly sticking out on the left and on the right? Yes. Or is it not sticking out? Well, you know that she didn't eat very much last week. The whole intestines and the whole belly is sort of too empty. So you want to have big bellies. They are machines that make milk. And the other one is condition scoring. You probably know a lot about it. This is a condition score one, extremely skinny, and you want to have a, two, a, a, three, a three or three uh, plus cow, or three and a half even. So the big discussion is always with feed advisors. Oh yeah, let's put more, more, more concentrate in. But we say no, you have to put more fiber in. And we see that 60% fiber and 40% um, um, concentrate is the most healthy mix that cows can still produce a lot of milk and they have the highest feed efficiency. So not the in, in overall liters is the, is the aim, no. The aim is having a very good feed efficiency. So that's what you should work on with your feed advisor to fine tune on. You want energy and you want fiber. And fiber is essential for rumen health, especially on the robot farms. They don't walk very well if they don't get enough fiber. So you make sure you put extra fiber in on robot farms. We talked about this, you look at them and how many are chewing? 55 times, okay, you just check a few cows. Maybe you check two boots of, of chewing, like okay, wait till they swallow again, count again, they'll be more or less the same. But uh, you can learn a lot from cows when you start counting. We also let you count how many are chewing. Is it one out of 10? And we do it this afternoon. We have a workshop again where we show you some videos where you can do test your skills and observe observation. So how many are chewing? Uh, it should be seven out of 10 chewing because they are, they are there to chew and to make milk. Manure signals. A lot you can see and feel and hear from manure. So you check it and you think, hey, hmm, quite a big difference. Thinner and a bit thicker and you also saw the one that was really thin. And this one is a bit, what do you see about this one? What do you see here, the rumen, uh, this manure? You see one big corn in there, and it's also a bit yellowish. So this is a high corn ration, and maybe a cow is even selecting a lot of corn. Some cows are having dark manure sometimes. Uh, they eat a lot of uh, fiber only, and uh, a lot of protein, and some cows eat a lot of starch. So in, in, a, in a barn where you don't have good mixing, you see sometimes very different Manure coming out. So it's very interesting to do that scoring on a daily basis. Simple thing is um, with your eyes or with your ears. Yeah, I told you about the. <laughs> if you hear that, you know, oh, alarm, have to check. Cow loose, what are we going to do? Add more fiber or help that cow because she didn't eat enough on the feed fans. Second one, you do your boot test. So you step, you step in with your boot. And I always walk in a barn. First thing I do is check the cows, the building, and then I do a few. A few pieces of manure, I, sp I, I see how thick they are, and I spread them out. And then you can pick up with a glove, and you can squeeze it, squeeze the humidity out, and have a look, and then you can see a lot of fiber and maize. You can see how long the fiber is. Very simple test you can do on a daily basis. And then the, the last one is actually you take a sieve, and you wash out, and you take a cup, and then you fill it, and you put it in, and then you wash it out, and then you put the, put the stuff back. It's less than half fiber, then you have quite a good fermentation. If it's more than half fiber, you probably have not a very good fermentation. So very simple test you can do yourself. Look at the signals on the back of the cow. What are the cows telling you? Well, this is a, an old diarrhea case. Same here. 
So look at barn signals. So we have the cow signals, the rumen signals, the eating signals, and now we're going to look at the barn signals. The barns are built for cows, but I hate to say this, but 90% of the barns is built for, well, 90, I would say 95% of the barns is built for farmers and not for cows. And we design barns that are very suitable for cows, and guess what? They're also good for farmers because they make a lot more money in them. The only thing you have to do is have an extra body warmer because we have a lot lower temperatures in the barns and we make them really, uh, we prefer to have them always between zero and 20 degrees, but never colder than that and never warmer than that. Because cows like to be 10 degrees all, all the time. They're most efficient at 10 degrees. So farmers need a body heater that we can have open the buildings for 10 months a year. And then we have uh, an excellent ventilation and cows eat more. And also the barns are not made for, for cows because the barns are made for cows to rest and to eat. And these both things are not good enough. The cows can't rest good enough and they can't eat easy enough. So think about your barn. And we came to this conclusion 15 years ago, like, what are we doing? We can't do this to our cows. We need to make, make soft beds. We have to have more crossovers. We have to have better feed fences because we want the cows to eat and to rest. And if you make that very difficult, well, you end up with very bad results. So a few things. Um, is there feed? Well, that's the first thing. Uh, and who is cleaning the feeding table? Is it, um, is it uh, the cows or is it the farmer? If the cows clean the feeding table, what happens? The next meal will be very big and they have a big pH dip because they're hungry. You remember the graphs with the pH dips? So you have a low an acidity in the rumen because the first meal will be a lot bigger meal and they eat too much and they get a, a deep acidosis. So if you have your feeding table empty, it's a mistake. You really want to have three to five percent rest feed and feed it uh, that your high yielding cows can always being maximum efficient. That's, that's what the best farmers do. Everything I tell you is from farms from 65 countries around the world. I've been doing this, and actually, now I'm three days lecturing, but I normally are at least uh, uh, two days in the, in the barn every, um, every week in, in different countries. And I see amazing things around the world. Amazingly well organized, but also a lot of horrible things. And I feel sorry for the cow. I hate to see a cow lame or wounded. I just doesn't feel right. So let's work on a better industry together. And we have to do it because the, the consumers want us to do it. Show good examples. So weigh it and know what you're doing and then fill it up again. So do you use the whole feeding fans? Some people have it. They have a big feeding fence. They have actually 70 centimeters per cow. But then within an hour after feeding, the first 20 places are empty. And why is that? Well, because all the cows come there because it's light, light and air at the open door. They like to eat there. So the cow's telling you, we need more light and air. But it's also where the crossover is, so they start eating here. If you don't push it in after an hour, you already miss feed intake. Very simple. If you're not pushing it in here or if you're not spreading it out again, you miss feed intake. And that's what I see on every farm in the world. They have already a lack of feed space. Then already the two doors, there's 10 meters not in reach anymore, and then the rest is pushed out, and then after five hours, the farmer decides to push it up. But then you're already limiting feed intake. People don't realize that cows are marathon runners. You want to make their life as easy and smooth as possible. Let them run the marathon every day, so feed them like, like a sports hero. Push it and spread it. There's all kinds of tools and things that you can do, and just a few examples, but you want to push it, but very important, spread it out. Another simple tip, if you go feeding from um, 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon, guess what? You improve your output a lot. You know why? Why is it better to feed at 5 o'clock? Plus one liter on a lot of farms, sometimes one and a half liter, especially in farms where they have a lack of feed space. Because there's a lot of feed available during the night, the weak cows can also eat, and they eat more. Or, or the weak cows will eat more meals and more spread out during the day. So the same amount of total feed intake and one liter of milk because there's less cows with pH dips, less cows with, with acid rumens because they have more spread of the intake. The weak cows can only eat at night. So if they can have at least find something there, it's, it's better. Also, the cows like to eat the biggest meal in the early morning. And between 6 and 9, there's nothing there on 95% of the feeding tables in the world. And the other one out of 20 farmers is feeding at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Of course, the best farms feed twice a day fresh or three times a day fresh. But that's like 
in countries like Saudi Arabia with neo-slavery, where people are very cheap to rent in and then they can do that, just in time management three times a day. So I also look at the practical part, and I think once a day feeding is excellent if you have good quality feed, and then in the morning you push the rest in, which is still partly fresh, and then you push that in in the early morning. Just after you lock in the cows, you push the feed, and you also have less milk time. The cows go faster through the milk parlor. So, good taste. Uh, this was 45 degrees, and the cows really didn't like it. How many cows are eating here? Learn to see these things. Hey, there's only one cow eating, four cows watching. That doesn't seem right. It should be 50-50 eating and chewing, and then actually they're all eating. That would be excellent. But here, four of them are not eating. Water, fresh water available. Um, and easy available. I saw this in Ireland. They had one drinker in the corner, and um, the cows can only reach that drinker when Big Mama was out of the way, but Big Mama was standing there quite a few hours, like, <laughs> looking around. <laughs> and they're standing there for half an hour, keeping everybody away. Hey, you can see I'm the boss, huh? That's what cows do. Cows, cows are very dominant sometimes. Don't make it too high. You see the shiny metal here? And then, well, here they can shit in it. But Jack told me, uh, he said, well, why do you make the drinker so high? Because if the, if the, yeah, they're afraid that the cows will shit in it. Well, if they, can't, if they can't shit in it, they can also not drink out of it. Because we have the entrance here and the exit here. But cows are on the same level. So you can never reach that. If you make them higher, well, oh, congratulations, no shit in the drinkers, but they can't drink. So we make them a lot lower nowadays, and if you have space around the drinker, nothing will go wrong. They can actually, they hardly ever uh, shit in the drinkers. That's not a big issue. You have to check them every day anyway, and if it happens, it's not a big deal. Every 20 cows a drinker, well spread over the barn. Water intake is really important for cows. They will do a lot better if you put more water. What about this one? This is a funny one. This is a heifer shed. You see how high it is? And there's no water in there, only the bottom has water. So the farmer had a smart solution. He put a step stone. You see the step stone here in the front? <laughs> so he put a little step stone there. And um, now people try to do things, and it's better than nothing, but it's not good enough, you know? You want to you make life easier for a cow. One big drinker per 20 cows, and, and even a fast drinker, it needs enough flow. You know this guy? He's the guy that said, okay, well, Two years ago, I came to, uh, came to here, and Jordan needed a sponsor for, for cow signals. And, uh, and Barry said, well, let's have a look what the guy has to tell us, and uh, we'll do some people signal session with my team. And since then, we've been very uh, much involved with Perina. We have 15 trainers trained, and they want to offer you a free workshop. So make sure you fill in this little form and, um, and leave it to one of the reps. They'll pick it up in a few minutes. Fill in your name and address. You can even win a brush. But I'd like you to to do these workshops on the farm. Simple things. We just go there, take a bucket, pull the plug, and see what happens. Is there 20 liters per minute coming out? If not, the cows cannot drink enough. They want to drink with 20 liters per minute. So you want to have a lot of water places available and uh, make it easy for the cow to drink. This is a nice stress-free calving line on my neighbor farm in Holland. And that was actually 20 liters coming out here per minute. So test it, then you know what you're doing. And this was another farm, another neighbor, and here she... <laughs> After milking, all the cows come there, they empty the trough, they don't have enough, enough uh, storage in the trough, and the water flow is too low. So if you don't have 20 liters per minute coming in, or in a big trough, 30 liters per minute, you never get the trough full enough, unless you have a very big trough with a lot of storage. So you have to think like a cow and make sure you work on, 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 on drinkers. This one here, a dry cow will drink 60 liters per day. How do you get 60 liters per day out of a trough like this? That is a hard job. And we see the many tie stalls, so this is a big limiting factor. So, so either you make a new water system in your tie stall, you have to do something, or, you, or you, you pump up the pressure, or you make the holes, clean out all the holes, because there's some bottlenecks in your system. There have to be good water for every cow. All the cows like to eat at the same time. You know why? Because a cow is a herd animal, and a herd animal wants to do the things at the same time. So in this barn here, in, uh, this is actually in New York State, not far away from here, and we see that we have two herds, you see? One herd eating, one herd standing and waiting in the back lane, and some of them resting. And then when these are all ready, they all have to get, get, get a drink here and then lay down, and then the other ones can eat. So here the cows don't eat 12 meals a day, only the half of them does that, but the other half only eats six meals a day. And that is really, really not what we want. 
Interestingly, we see a, a double amount of pregnancies if you have 61 centimeters, two feet. If you have one feet feeding space, you only have half the pregnancies. A direct relation with feed intake and pregnancy is amazing. If you know all these things, you would build a barn like this one. And this is the one I, I was telling you about, 67,000 liters lifetime production. So tell me why, why is this such a good barn? What do you see here? It's a sand bedded barn. And you see, uh, this is the walking lane for the cows. They walk in the dry part where the sand is spilled. There's a rubber mat here. And now within five minutes after eating, you see all the cows come and having a bite. You see, they all come and have a bite, one by one. And there's no fighting. They all can do what they want. They just walk away, uh, stand up quietly. One lame cow here, there's only one cow to fetch. Robot barn, two robots. This cow is already under treatment, but she's still a bit lame. So they pick her up and bring her to the robot. And no discussion, everybody goes and eats. Sometimes there's a little bit of discussion, okay, I want to eat here, okay, then I will go there. But they know there's a place for everybody. So there's no stress. They can eat whenever they feel like it, and they eat 12 times a day. And this is the farm with, with, with uh, he was uh, number three last year in durability, uh, in lifetime production. And we designed this barn five years ago. So it's, you can do it. And it's a four-row barn with two feeding tables, you only see half the barn. And now we have this barn, and that's the, other, the opposite. This was a six-row barn with two feeding tables. And uh, here you see a lot of cows on the left side resting in the bed. They don't go there. And you see 10 cows cruising and running away uh, for eating. They want to have food, but they're not going to get something. They know they want it. They know they need it, but they don't get it because there's no space. And this is why, you l why we get sick cows. This is why we get mastitis. Uh, these guys, these farms I'm showing you, they have less than five cases of mastitis per year. And the best one with the sand bed had one case of mastitis out of 150 cows treated in one year. You only believe it when you've been there, when you've seen it, when you talk to the farmer. And that's why I'm showing you these videos, because you can do better. If you know what to do, you can do it. And it starts with building the right building. And it, uh, when if, you, if you have an old barn, it starts with renovating and doing the right thing for your cows. It's just getting the right knowledge out there and getting the skills and also train your staff. So if you have any workers on the farm, i really like you to bring them to the cow signal session. It's for free, uh, what, what we're offering now uh, with Perina here, or go to the video learning package on my website, cowsignals.com. So a few last minutes, last minute things because they're trying to get me off stage here. I think I have two minutes left. No feed selection. So that's why we want to have um, a good mix. And uh, if you feed uh, all components separately, you have a low pH. So give them a good mix. Feed twice a day, you have better feed intake and less, uh, less selection. Fighting on the feed fence, you can see it if you want to see it. You can see what's happening and they're fighting for food. Sorting, how big are the, are the particles? Huh? Six, seven centimeters. If they are too big, they will be there. They will be left over. And you can calculate them, but they don't go in the cow, so they don't have the effect. So make them five centimeters, and they all go in. So chop them on the right length. If you can't chop it, let somebody else do it for you. But chop good quality hay or straw, and you will increase your output and your feed efficiency enormously. If you see them shaking like this, well, what can you do? Make it a bit more wet, make it a bit more fine, mix it a little bit longer, or choose for other components that you mix in the feed. You have to think how you do it. Slippery floors, a big killer for cows. They slide, they, 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 uh, walls in front of cows, dead-end roads, um, all things that you don't want to have. And here we have uh, two red terrorists, you see? And she wants to eat, but she doesn't get anything. So I don't know if it's discrimination against uh, this poor, poor black cow by the, by, the, by the red cows, but it's a Norway movie. They can't, she's just trying it for 10 minutes, and she doesn't get a bite. Bang, you just steal one. You see? This is what cows do. So every centimeter extra feed space is more feed intake. So you have to give them more space around the barn. And this is a typical robo barn, a retrofit. And if this, this, this road is only two meters, well, it's very difficult for the cows to go to this robo. So you need minimum space, three meters and, and, and five to eight meters in front of the two robots to have cows attracted to the robot. And then you have complete free cow traffic. Cows will, uh, will be very happy to go to your robot. And you only pick up one or two cows per day uh, when you're cleaning. And that's not work at all. So never decide for feed first. Always decide for free cow traffic. That's a very big message I can give you about robot milking. And let us look at your design if you want. Get it out um, or to your, to, your, to your other advisors. But really look critically at your design. We don't want to see waiting cows. Waiting cows, cows don't have time to wait. 
It's really not what we want. So do something against waiting cows, okay? Let them eat and let them rest, and that's what we want. Last thing is the, the feeding fans. The feeding fans, both systems can be good, but 90% of the feeding tables in the world is rubbish, is crap, because constructors make it and they have no clue about cows. Cows don't want a high wall, they don't want a wide wall, they don't want a bar in the neck, they want to have space to eat. So maximum 50 centimeters high. In the building for the cow book, you can read all this stuff. Really, really talk with, with, with smart guys to do this better. This is eight centimeters wide instead of 20. That's 12 centimeters extra space to eat at during the night or in the early morning. There's still something to reach. So give more space to the cow and make sure the wall stops the cow and not the bar. So this is a Jersey farm. They have like 30 centimeters ahead of the barn, uh, only 40 centimeters high, and the cows can actually eat. They spill a little bit here, but they're, they're, they're solving that now with making the feed a bit finer. So this works very good, but you don't want to have a too high wall, and we see so many trouble in, in barns. Too narrow feed fence. You see this wrinkled neck here? Too bad. So they have to be wider. It's simple things that have to be higher. You don't want to ruin your cows. You don't want to make the wall too high. So if you've seen all these examples, you probably know what to do. This is just a little taste of cow signals. So um, I want to close off with the last message, and that's actually um, let the cow rest for 14 hours. And even more importantly, around calving, make sure you have a very good stress-free calving line. And that looks like, um, like this one here. A stress-free calving line where the cows can easily enter and easily get out. And this is already a little bit of a bottleneck, so I don't want to have these fences here. Make them open all day that the cows can easily eat and rest. So a good stress-free calving line, a soft bed for every cow, and one feeding place per cow. And then we can have the cows eating 12 times a day. Thank you for listening. This was Cow Signals.